Got a couple of things to do today. Not sure where to start, but one thing is for sure, I am going to attempt to do some test fitting on the first gen 77 Honda Civic for the K24 engine or a K20. They're pretty much the same size, but I just want to see what it looks like. So that guy right there is what I'll do measurements for today. But before I can do that, I gotta move some things around, make some room. I gotta get the can uh, the ugh, ugh. I gotta get the gantry crane prepped right behind me so that I can hook up the engine to it and drop it in sort of to simulate how it'll feel, how it'll look inside the 77 without a transmission of course because i'll have to get perhaps an s2000 transmission but i want to see what it looks like first to see if this is going to be possible how extensive the modifications are going to be then after that i'll put it on the lift check the body condition the chassis condition the rust condition and see where we're at let's get going car is hot. I've got the gantry in place now. And as you can see, it is lined up with the front end of the car. But first, I gotta put the K-Series engine with the engine stand right out there, pull it off the engine stand, and see if I can do some test fitting. Not sure how that's gonna go. But we'll see. this K-Series sitting on an engine stand for probably about a year or so on and off because it was originally from the Honda Accord if you've been following the page and now that Honda Accord has a JDM K24A in it don't know how long that's gonna last but nevertheless the stock engine is out and I am using that as a template to sort of get some measurements to fit this K-Series or a K-Series into this 1977 first generation Honda Civic. And I've been working on that all morning. I took it off the engine stand, put it on the gantry, and lowered it just to see if we really had enough clearance to work with, and I think we do. So this is it. This is the 1977 first generation Honda Civic, and it fits as far as clearances go. Here is pretty much where the transmission bell housing would be. This is obviously the firewall of the vehicle. This is a support bracket for the engine mount of the original engine itself. And it's literally sitting on the cross member of this car, which is why you can see that it's sitting up high. So that cross member has to come out Something different has to be fabricated to hold this engine in there. I don't know what, I have zero experience here, but I will learn, this is the challenge. I'm gonna have to also take out the cross member and see how low I can get it to sit by, by itself and then raising the engine up a bit in terms of height so the next step at this point 
now that I know that it actually fits in here, is to get this engine back out, put it back on the engine stand, take out the cross member, take out the um, subframe, I guess, and anything else, any supporting mounts, the brake booster, the master cylinder, all that stuff that's in the way right now that you can see here. And then try this again for real, just to see what I have to cut out before I commit to actually getting a transmission for it. I'm shooting for an S2000 transmission. It's a damn shame because I had an S2000 transmission and I sold it a couple of months ago. I should not have done that. But I gotta shop for a new one again, but prior to doing that, I wanna go ahead and put this on the lift, get everything that is a bolt-on component of that engine bay out of the vehicle. Once it's out of the vehicle, I can really test this again to see what I actually have to cut and take it from there. So let me do that now. Okay, so I took a one day break, Sunday now, and the car is on the lift. And I think I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I have going on. I don't think it looks too bad underneath there. I think we have a lot of room to work with and I think I can do this. I'm not sure. I wanna be 100% confident, but because I've never done this before, I'm only, you know, less than 1% confident. Let me show you what I have. So over here, we have the rear bumper. As you can see, I know it's high up on the lift. I'll bring it down shortly. But what we have are some major rust areas, but nothing too serious. The muffler has definitely got to go, but there aren't too many big issues. It's just that wherever the rust areas are, it's pretty bad. Like these corners right here look pretty bad themselves. The suspension area doesn't look too bad, but of course we're not gonna use that suspension anywhere. We have the gas tank right here. Muffler. And this is the trunk area. This portion here is pretty rusted, but not too bad. And let's walk this side of the vehicle. As you can see, this is rusted out, but we can fix that. Same on this side. We have some rust areas here. But I think these are all areas we can fix. If we go back to this side, we have these rusted areas on the chassis itself, right on the frame. And this area right here, this is all by the passenger side. So it looks doable. If we look at the car from underneath, and this is straight from the rear, it looks in pretty fantastic condition compared to what the exterior, or at least the body um, by the door panels and hood and all of that is, is actually uh, set to. It's pretty rusted, the paint has been eaten through with rust. But I think, I think we have something to work with. Now in the front area, we have some challenges, but these challenges can be fixed. So we'll start here with the actual suspension. The subframe and cross member can actually come out. And this can be sanded down. 
but I highly doubt I'll be able to use that anyway for the transplant that I'm gonna go with, which is a K20 at this point. See this cross member here or subframe or whatever we wanna call it at this point is pretty rusted, but I think it's more of external rust that we can sand down and recover. This side is pretty good, but it's not eaten up with rust. Now this section here, um, this is the frame itself. That's pretty rusted. So we'll have to fix that up on top as well. But a lot of this stuff is going to get cut out. I believe that's the battery tray. But that stuff is going to get cut out. The battery tray right here. But the front end from inside the engine bay looks pretty good. No big deal there. And if we look at the vehicle from the front, it's not bad. It's really not bad. I think it's doable. So I think we have something good to go with here. I'm gonna go ahead and lower this vehicle, take some footage of the actual panels, the actual side of the vehicle, so that you can all see what I'm working with. The roof is in pretty bad shape. The interior needs definitely needs some work. And on the siding here, let me show you that. Oh, sorry, I don't have a gimbal. I don't use a gimbal. I have a gimbal, but they're harder to use and it's work to me. See this, this rusted area here? That needs to be fixed. And we'll see a lot of that throughout the entire vehicle. We yeah, have paint bubbled up here. And the wheel well, there's some rust. But I think most of this can definitely be salvaged. So having said that, let me go ahead and bring this vehicle down so I can show you more. So this is what we're working with. A 1977 Honda Civic. This is the engine bay. This is the condition of the engine bay. I think we can definitely get this recovered. We have some rust areas that can be sanded down. Not too many areas on the chassis itself. And the chassis itself actually doesn't have anything eaten up other than just surface rust. A lot of this stuff will have to come out. The idea is to take off all components that are bolt on. So the brake booster, master cylinder, these um, firewall plates, the throttle cable, anything that's a bolt on will be coming out. This way I can test fit the engine one more time to see what I actually have to cut. So a lot of it will come out. This rust area here, this is pretty bad. So this is gonna have to get cut out and re-added. Do some welding in that area. So you can see the entire windshield, uh, I guess, panel area. It's all gone. And then the roof, the roof is pretty bad. Look at this, all the way out. That's pretty rough. So I'm gonna have to cut out this area. Probably take the roof out. What I need to do first actually is just sand everything down, see the condition that everything is in, and then decide from there. But right along the top as well, it's pretty bad. But who knows, maybe I don't have to cut it out completely. Just have to check what I have. You can see here, 
this rear passenger side quarter panel. It's all rusted. We have some pillars that are rusted out as well. Let me show you the interior. So this is the interior. It smells very moldy in here. Probably very unhealthy to smell or breathe this in. I had to keep it in here. I noticed that it was just sitting outside and water was getting in most of the time. And on that mat, there was a lot of water. These seats are pretty damp. So the entire bumper is pretty rusted out as well, from what you can see. The hatch area is bleeding rust from, as you can see here, it's all bleeding rust because the hatch door is completely gone. It's destroyed. I have to completely replace that door. But inside the vehicle, it doesn't look too bad. I don't know what the condition is going to be once I take the carpet out. So that'll be interesting. But I have nowhere to stow any of this stuff yet. So in the meantime, I'm just checking things out. This is what the hatch door looks like closed. As you can see, it's definitely in bad shape. So I have to try to see if I can find one. And get it replaced. The roof and the pillars are all rusted in the back as well. So you can see that all there. So that's what I'm working with. I think, oh, it's hot, Florida weather. I think, it's a, I think it's a good project. It's a lot of work. I have zero experience with any of it, but fabricating and getting things going in terms of measurements for new mounts, test fitting an engine, restructuring the, the alignment for uh, the engine itself, the way it's gonna sit, all of that stuff. I have no idea how that's gonna work. So, it's just time to reinvent myself, I guess. So keep watching, I'll keep you all posted. Let's see if I can get it going. I don't know how long this is gonna take me. I'm new to all of this. I still have to get a welder. I have to do research on sanding properly so I don't sand too much in certain areas to where I have to refill. It, it, there's, a, there's just a lot of stuff I really don't know and understand about bodywork and restoration. So this is new. We'll see where we get. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching.